had two philosophical questions, so I'm not sure how easy it is to answer. Uh, the first is simple, it's easy, and that was just why, why Scala or Java? Or the majority of people are Java, what am I losing if I, if I, if I go with Java versus Scala? Because everybody's supposed to think Scala. The second one is a um, more serious question, and that is, I'm okay with software having bugs, they all do, but can you answer how stable, reasonably stable, is a solution based on what's documented. So it's okay if MLib does not support a random forest. It's clearly described and I understand what that means. But if it says that it supports support vector machines, will it work or am I going to have to you know, deal with a lot of gotchas and a lot of support questions? Like, can you answer that production ready level ish question? So the first question is why, what do you lose what do you lose with going to Scala? What you really lose is, if you're comfortable with Java, you have a learning curve. Right? That, that's, that's what you lose. Right? You have an, you have, it has to fit your organization. We, we do a lot of, we focus on the enterprise. A lot of enterprises don't want to move to Scala. Right? That, that's the problem with it, and that's the kind. Yeah. So more, what do you lose the other way? What do I lose by sticking to Java? With the API, or just sort of in general? Everything. A, a lot less given the movement to Java 8. Right? You get some of the nice things there. But let's not, let's not kid ourselves. Scala is way more than just lambdas, right? You lose, you, you lose some of the, the fundamental benefits that come with functional programming. And they're, 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 they're all over the place, right? Um, but to your second point, which was, given the documentation doesn't live up to its documentation, and if it potentially doesn't live up to the high, does it live up to the documentation? I would say yes. Does. They're, they're meticulous in their documentation. The things they're documented from what I found work. Keith, you have thoughts on, on that? Well, Scala versus Java, that's really a language war question. As a Java guy, I'll say I like Java. I actually get a little angry with the Databricks guy say that, that uh, Spark is inherently better because there's less code. We always show a Scala example versus a Java example, which is really a meaningless comparison. Uh, you know, when you look at a Java comparison to a Java comparison, you do see that uh, Spark does provide real value versus, say, generic MapReduce. So I think I think they make a disingenuous argument. Now, am I going to argue whether Scala is better than Java or vice versa? I'm not. You know, I have when I when I went to school at Carnegie Mellon, there was a fundamental rule: there's only four programming languages: object-oriented, functional, uh, uh, what did I just say? Underrated, functional, procedural, and then logic-based languages. That's they're all the same. So if you like Scala, more power to you. If you like Java, more power to you. I, I really wouldn't get bogged down in that. I think it's what you're comfortable with, what your people are skilled in. Um, I guess I would say, just as a piece of advice, find out a bad idea to learn some Scala, because it is becoming pretty popular, but uh, Java's fine. But all their examples are in Java. Is yeah. 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 As far as the second part, I, I would be a little less optimistic. I, we had some pretty nasty situations where we hit some pretty weird bugs in the framework. And uh, I, I think you need to get the eyes open. But one point I do want to point out, I think this is a very important point, is Scala, sorry, geez, I just said that. Spark is an execution framework, not your data storage system. Right? So if you choose to go down the Spark route for some particular use case, and let's say you hit some weird bug or some issue that you didn't anticipate, or whatever you decide to change directions, all you've lost essentially is that execution attempt, not, oh my god, I lost my data, my system is reliable, something like that. So I would encourage you to try Spark, but just be realistic about, you know, don't say, oh, we're going to start the Spark project today and we're going to finish it in four weeks and go to production. I, I don't think that's a realistic uh, way to approach it. And I also want to mention, the gentleman over there raised this, and I, I, want, I want to mention, don't forget that Spark isn't just about performance. The, the API is really nice. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, there, you, when you try to write a MapReduce program, there's just so much stupidity that you have to write because the framework is so primitive. And Spark is a much more, much better abstraction. And, you know, it is what it is. So, leverage it. Love it.